Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies. My name is John. And this video is going to be when my friend came over, Holgoth 73, John Hall. He had a look through the shelves. So what we did was, I just filmed from the other side of the room and John went through the shelves and we just chit-chatted at, at length about this and that to do with all the things that you can see on these particular shelves. So I've been meaning to put this uh, video out for quite a while. I've get, got the footage together because on my other phone, the footage for some reason just didn't want to know about the editing software, so I had to sort of reformat it. So that's why it's taking a little bit longer to get this thing out. So anyway, without any further ado, it's about 40 minutes long, the footage, and it's uh, to me I found a really interesting chit-chat about movies and just and genres in general. So I'm hoping to have John much more on the channel next year. So okay, here's the footage. Please enjoy. So this is uh, so this is John looking through the collection. So what do you think, John? Well, most most impressive would be something of an understatement. Very impressive. Uh, certainly grew quite a bit since the last time I saw it. Uh, so like a year ago when you saw it, wasn't it, John? Ish. It has been, yeah, yeah. Uh, quite some time, and it's, yeah, there's quite a lot more than the last time. It's also a tree I wouldn't want to begin. So you know when you, you put your stuff on your shelves at home, do you have yours grouped up in labels or would you say alphabetically? I uh, try and keep uh, the same brands together. Uh -huh. I try to colour coordinate the yeah. seams. It's not always easy. I'm a bit uh, like that as well. Yeah. Um, sometimes I try, I try and coordinate it in relation to the font. On the cases but that's mm. just touch and go um because i used to do the uh the arrow ones there these ones here i used to do them with color i used to have all like the yellows together but then i found that um i started to put them with like sort of you know like gory ones together 60s yeah. together uh directors together so that's how i went with that one eventually yeah if, if only they kept the cases all the same color like like yeah, yeah, like there, like there, yeah, like there. It'd be so much easier, you know. Um, if it was me, I mean, I would try. If, I think if it was me, I would try and keep these ones at the front, and then keep the white ones further along. So, so that to me, to my mind, um, if you have these ones here and then these ones afterwards, mm. um, they would, they would, they would like. Um, Blend more with these ones because these ones are white as well, even though they're armory cases. Yeah, I did have them together at one point, but then I, then again the slip covers came out, so oh. I thought, well, the slip covers are the same height yeah. as the other one, uh, you know, like the the white boxes. Mm -hmm. So that's what changed your mind with that. But I know what you're saying. I was I was all because I remember you remember when I had me uh, DVDs or Blu-rays in the other room. Yeah, they were all that way, weren't they? All the they white were. ones together. They were remember that? Yeah, I think the back yeah, they were. were. Uh, that's all. This is that much to choose from here. I mean, you, you could be here all night just picking one title to watch. I mean, there's, there's that many different genres, there's that many different. So, you know yourself, yeah. Which do you think is the best line there? Do you think it's the slasher collection or do you think it's the Italian collection or the best? Of, with now, them? when you say best line, do you mean just like the, the, the presentation for extras? For well, I, I think for enjoyability, which one would you enjoy most out of them? The Italian collection, yeah. I thought you'd say that, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, there's there's a few titles here which which I would enjoy. I haven't seen uh -huh. everything on this slide. The same goes for along here. Um, but because I, I like a bit of Italian exploitation, this is more my uh -huh. this is more my line here. Well, you're the one who's told me really about giallos. I didn't know what a giallo was till you mentioned it. Uh, I thought, oh, that sounds all right. Yeah, it's um... the giallo man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, I mean, I'm, I do like uh, a touch of the old giallo myself, but. Uh, uh -huh. More the slasher kind than the. Uh, so, what's your favourite Giallo, John? Any idea? I don't know. <laughs> There's quite a few I could think of, but uh, not one in particular. What one do you think's mine? Deep red. Deep red. You got ah, it. Ah. Ah. You know that when you when I got that one, I thought, ah, that's it. You know, when you told us about the whole storyline, with when you not you see something in the movie, it, you take the movie in a different way, which I think is great. Yeah, well, I think we're we're. I think Deep Red is generally considered as like a textbook giallo. It's got pretty much everything you look for in a giallo. You know, yeah. all the trappings are there in one way or the other. You know, but then again, it's sort of general me what do you expect, you know? Yeah. Uh, 
But he didn't really invent the uh, giallo, did he? Because it was, it was a bit before his time. Where Mario Barber's Germany credits have been the, mm. the generator of the giallo, shall we say? I mean, I mean, fair enough. I mean, Hitchcock got there first with Psycho back in '60, but it was yeah. Barber who sort of, you know, he um, he put a different twist on that. So, what would you say about uh, is it a girl who knew too much? Is that the first giallo? Do you think? Um, yeah, and in the sense, it's like an Italian thriller. Yeah. You want a bit of a bit of a. Bit of a murder mystery. I saw that one not uh, not too long ago for the second time. Why? Yeah, actually, don't actually. I it's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, the the American cut is a bit more light hearted, a bit more enjoyable. I've mm. never seen that. I've only ever watched the Italian cut. Um, but uh, no, I think the last time I watched it was the second time I've seen it. Uh, not too bad a film. Yeah, quite quite liked it. Uh, and then of course we had the Blood and Black Lace in 1963. I think it was. Um, it's all right, Ned. That was where the killer sports a spiked glove. Yeah. Yes, before Freddy Krueger came <laughs> up with the same idea, you know. Um, they all copy them off, off things, don't they? Yeah. Down the line. I mean, of course, I mean, once our gentle came in, came at the fold, you know, uh, late 60s, early 70s with over the crystal plumage, and basically he sort of, you know, made the, GI, the genre as well. Mm. His own sort of speak after that, um, but there were a lot of other good directors in the in the genre as well. So I would have like to say, what's your top five directors for Giallo movies? Would you say? Uh, well, it's got to be Barber. Uh, I mean, he he got that he got that first. Yeah. He basically blazed the trail. Uh, Argento, Sergio Martino. Uh, let's have a look. Would you say Fulci was, or would you think he yeah, was? Yeah, yeah, Fulci. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, maybe Lamberto Barber. Uh, I mean, really? I haven't seen every, I haven't seen every Giallo. Uh, yeah, I do like some of the Antonio Bido Gialli, even though he, didn't, he only directed um, uh, two or three, I think. Uh, I mean, the good thing about the Gialli is they're quite stylish. You know, they're very stylish and they're not in your face stylish, but they're very. Right. Very stylish in European way, so to speak, you know. They're good to look at, aren't they? They are. They're, yeah. they're kind of more well done than you think when you go back and look at them. You think, ah, oh, that, that's a that's a decent looking film. Well, the thing is with the uh, with the giallo, it's generally more to do with the um, like the murders and the and the mm. the protagon protagonist who thinks who knows there's a, a missing piece of the puzzle but doesn't quite know Aye. what it is. And you know, becomes an amateur sleuth trying to find out what's going yeah. on. Becomes a target for the killer in the process. It's it's not so much about the police presence in the film. Yeah. Not so much about the investigation side of things. Because sometimes the police can be read edges, can't they? They're just like you're just like fools. Well, that, that's it. It's like if you like, look to really see, stupid. Exactly. If you look to see a Black Christmas, you know the Bob Clark film from nineteen seventy four. The police in that are about as much use as a chocolate fire dog. Uh -huh. You know. Um, I know What's... that's not a, well. It, it's 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 Giallo West. Yeah. Like an American, you know. Yeah. Um, so what's that movie? And I keep meaning to ask you this one. Where there's, I'm trying to think what the uh, the woman's calling it, but it's all to do with that. It's like there's a killer on. It's like all to do with like smoky shadows, and is it? I'm not saying it's Britt Eklund, but it's it's what's it called again? She's a she's another sort of um, uh, it's like a similar. Oh, she was in. I'll tell you what, she was in Lisa and the Devil. Alki Summer. Yeah, was she not in another Giallo where she was getting chased at night? And it was dead Iron good. Blood. Right, when is that gets, what it is? She gets chased off the barren through all the yeah the the the, the, the fog the fog and uh -huh. shrouded them um, streets and alleys. I know because brilliant. Yeah, I was wanting to watch it and I thought, well, I want to ask you first because I don't want to go through yeah. like three thousand movies. Well, apparently that that was influenced by a, a similar scene in the in the, the early fifties House of Wax with Vincent Price. Really, I didn't know that. I read that somewhere else, but there's a scene in there I think where um where a female's being chased by I'm not really assuming it's Price's character, but she's chasing all the all the fog and missing everything else mm -hmm. and and um other pierce have had an influence on, on the same scene in barren blood that's one of my favorite barbers by the way yeah oh yes one it's, it's not barbers. bad I, well i know it's a barber but ivan peary just what a film that is love it it's been a, i've only ever seen that once and it's been a while since i saw that i don't i don't remember it being too bad um, well, you remember the transformation scene with that woman? Actually, ages in, ages yeah. in front of. How did that? There's, there's, no, there's no cut ways, nothing yeah. like that. Yeah. That's unreal. For the, when did it come out? Like? Was it the 50s, obviously? It was 1957, I think. 
Wow. I think it was 57, I could be wrong. Um, so on the sort of, at that end, I'm going towards more the sort of light heart, you get like the horrors and you've got your Eurekas yeah. and then you've got more your sort of average movies there. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I mean, I, well, as, as you well know, I don't, I don't mind modern movies, um, but I just, I tend to find uh, many of them watchable, but, but you know, generally forgettable. Aye, you're I not going to go back in the second time, are you? No, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, there are some good films, you don't get some good films these days, of course you do. Right. Um, maybe it's just an age thing, I don't know, but I find myself keep on coming back to the older stuff, uh -huh. much in the same way I do music. Yeah, you know? yeah, well, um, I don't get a start about new music. <laughs> well, you and me both. What a... Uh, uh, no, but I mean, I think if you were to ask me my favourite films, I don't think I'd be any anything recent. No, nah, yeah, aye, mm. you're right there. Very rare that a, a modern film will come into me, into me like top twenty. So, what do you think about that rollerball one down there? You think it's a decent um, setup? Because I I was really amazed to get that for thirty four quid. You know. Really? Yeah. Uh, no, it's. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest. I'm not a fan of the film myself, but I'm used to the own. But it's. Oh, do you not? Oh, I thought you liked. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, uh, not too much of a fan. I see you recognise that Friday the 13th box set from somewhere. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, I think about a year ago, um, somebody uh, passed it across to us for a a, re a very reasonable price, which yeah. I'm still uh, and I still have to get through because well, I tell you what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to set away at some time to watch it properly rather than just... I've started with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, which I haven't seen for a lot of years. I've got that box set as well, the HMV exclusive. It's alright, isn't it? It's it not is, bad, yeah, it is, yeah. And... Out of print as well. I didn't think they'll go out of print as soon. Um, you got to, you know when things go out of print, it's a case of you've got, you've got, to, you've got to pounce them, haven't you? Because yeah. you cannot wait around like for something to come in a sale in case it just vanishes. Yeah, well, that's, I'm a firm believer on striking while the iron's hot. Yeah, so right. if there's something which is limited, get it while you can, you know. And then you don't, I mean, some people might say, oh, you paid £30 or something. They say, I'd rather pay £30 than £300. Exactly. I mean, when I Friday the 13th box set, mm -hmm. I've got three copies of that at home and they're all sealed. <laughs> really? I'm not kidding. I've got three. They're all sealed. Well, I can believe it, actually. Um, I can believe it. Yeah, uh, but... Um, I mean, they're all in pristine condition. I've just I've never got a chance. Well, I haven't even got a Blu-ray player, so I've never got. Right, a, yeah. no, I've never got a chance to watch it yet. But, uh, but. Um, I mean, I've checked them out. They look, they look astounding. I do think there's going to get some 4Ks, especially the first one. It's going to be. It's, it's round, right round the corner. That one. It's got to be. Well, I mean, a very fact, the shock factory, a screen factory, I should say, or um, bringing like that. You, 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 you see titles of their, their stuff now. It's only a matter of time before we get that. Yeah, you know, I mean, they've not long done Leah Live and Prince of Darkness, mm -hmm. and um, you had 4K trying to uh, UHD, uh, of course, the Halloween movies as well. Of the issue with them, recently. Uh, more about that later. Yeah, <laughs> well, look, uh... I've got to say, I mean, that uh, the Halloween. Just the whole set on the, on them. Uh, I've only got Halloween two at, at this precise moment. Mm -hmm. Got a couple on the way. Um. They've done a really nice job with it. Um, it's it's up there. It's, it's like it's really hot. It. the yeah. box is so so hard. You know, you just think that's all. The sh you know, the boutique label should all release them like that. Yeah. And when you get a flimsy slip or no slip at all, really get some in nerves, man. I must admit, I do like slip cases, but I do I do um, I've got a bit of a fondness for rigid slip cases. Uh huh. Mm. So if right, because uh, I don't think I've asked you this before. Say if you're Mooching around and you and you collecting the likes of Jackie Chan and that. Mm -hmm. Do you make sure that you would always really want the slipcase? Oh yeah. All ah, right. Yeah. I, I didn't know if you were in because yeah. some people can sort of take them and leave them, but you're in the I want a slipcase gang. Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. you know, I'm, if I'm too late to get one, and if I miss out, well, if I look, it's my own fault. But yeah. uh, if I can get a while, while it's uh, while yeah. it's there, I will. I mean, like I say, when the uh, when the was it story Ricky came out. Um, I think the film well pretty much is sold out like that. It did, didn't it? And that's why 88 films had to really press another 2,000 copies. Mm -hmm. um, I think HMV still have some on the shelves who were there last week or the week before. Yeah, I've um, seen them recently, actually. Um... But what it was, uh, like I say, I, 
I told you earlier, I went in to HMB the Metro Centre once, and there was one copy, literally one copy on the shop. Yeah. So it was a few few seconds of register what I was looking at, so when I realised what it was... <laughs> was you like throwing people out of the way to get to it? Well, I wasn't going quite that far, I was the only <laughs> in the way, but I, I would have been tempted if I was. Uh, <laughs> Aye. So is there anything would you do differently with the shells, just out of interest? And you can you can say whatever you like. Uh, I would just try and keep I would try and keep the the, the, the labels together. Um, like I mean, how would I put it? Like say, uh, well I mean you, you know you've done that with the arrows, so it's nothing nothing wrong. There. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't mean anything wrong, but you know what I mean. Um, arrow, 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 arrow. Eighty eight, eighty eight. That's fine. Um, the only problem I've got with that is, and I'll tell you what's what's not cocking up at the minute is you know the killer crocodile thing. Oh yeah. It fits in that shelf, but it doesn't fit in the shelf above or the shelf below. Yeah. So really, I'm kind of stuck with it there, right. and I would like to move because um, that's that series is ever expanding and it's going down yeah. to that corner. So, um, the the way that the the shelves are, I'm I'm a bit tight for some space. Yeah. So I've got some of them can't be really put anywhere else because obviously my arrows have like they've jumped over them. Yeah. And they've went down to just round here. Oh, that's where yeah, the arrow academies yeah. are you yeah. know there yeah. so it's a bit it's not a bit of a mess but it's i didn't really want to do it that way but it's because that's know. killer killer crocodile which i don't know why they put a box set out of that but i don't mind it quite like have you seen killer crocodile i've got it but it's if this one that one's out of print yeah as well the box set if i'm not mistaken um this is i tell you what it's just jaws with a crocodile oh yeah yeah it's um by the way, anybody watching this online, you'll have to forgive me. I'm new to this game, so I'm very nervous. So if I yeah, yeah. make a few mistakes, you'll have to forgive me. Um, Doesn't matter. We're all friends here, man. Yeah. Well, it certainly seems like we're judging by all the comments and all the subscribers <laughs> you've got. So, yeah. I'll tell you what, you can't make more mistakes than I do. The thing is, I get them all out in the edit. Uh, if oh, I put like an unedited video of mine out, I'd lose every subscriber I've got. I don't know. I feel like I've made more than a few mistakes already, but I'll persevere on that. No, I don't think uh, I thought you'd done better than I have in your first video. Let's have a look, yeah. No, but you've, yeah, you've, John, you've got some good stuff. I mean, plenty of the freebies donated by a certain news viewers, truly. Yes, um, I know. Um, yes, more of that later. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. So, so what, we're, what we're doing here is actually me and John, the two Johns, we're talking about the fact is that um, we don't know where this video is going to end up in or what, what thing it's going to be in with or how you're going to see be introduced to John first of all. But it's going to be in a, um, in a video and uh, we've also got a video, another one we're working. They might have already seen, it might already be out or it might be going to come out where John's got some subscriber mail for us but rather than sending through the post, it was same as like last year. He gave it to us, and I think I opened them on like a day after, didn't I? And I did a video afterwards. Some, something yeah, like that. But yeah, but actually, you're going to yeah. actually do it. It's going to be like a live thing. You're going to give me the stuff like face to face, which I don't know if that's happened before. Possibly. I'm looking forward to it. I'm like, I'm looking forward to seeing your reaction. Yeah, yeah I'll I tell it's you. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I know a couple of things that I'm getting, and I'm, I'm, I'm that pleased with them, never mind what else is there. But you've cut us a couple of sweet deals with a few things in there, which we'll talk about. Um, some things, the, the best thing about John is that he'll get some for us, and I didn't even know it existed. He said, do you want this? I go, you don't, is that the thing? Oh, yeah, it's a thing. And one of the tones that you're talking about with being a 4K, I, I didn't even think that was a 4K. So that's great. Well, I mean, the thing is, I mean, I, mean, I don't see the point in holding on to an older release if a superior release comes along. So I'm, Aye. I'm always upgrading the collection one way or the other. You know, um, just once I get the upgraded release, I'll get rid of the, the older release because you're done. So what's the point of holding on to it? So you were talking about 4K though. So what's your thoughts on 4K in general? Not for me personally. I've got nothing against the format. I know, fair enough, it's superior to, to Blu-ray, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's the... Not, not every time, man. You've got to be a bit careful because if you yeah. just think, oh, I'm going to get the 4K of some film and think it's going to obviously be better. Yeah. Some things are not close. I mean, the, the one that's closest to me is Scott Pilgrim. That's the one that's like literally just a fraction above the Blu-ray. Yeah. So, so really, yeah. It was a waste of time yeah. getting it. I didn't yeah. do me homework though. I just just pounced and just thought, oh, it's got to look nice. Yeah. But it didn't. Well, it does look nice. It just doesn't look as nice as it, I thought it was going to look. Personally, for me, I mean, the book stops at Blu-ray. You know, I mean, because I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time collecting films longer than I 
probably I probably have a thought I would have done. Um, well, I know just a bit of a very short history thing. <laughs> How long have we been collecting? Well, you, we're, we're kind of met. It was about 92, wasn't it? It was 93 when we were. 93. Yeah, both, both uh, I was both with the Fimbus at Long Benton. That's it. You'd already been there before me, and I was a new starter, and we got on talking, and we discovered we had similar tastes in films. And so well, it was the first thing was Batman, wasn't it? Um, I'm sure that was the first thing we ever spoke about, Batman, and it just snowballed from there. I can't remember. It might, might have been. Yeah, it, might I think have it was been actually. Yeah, I'm not. It's been that long. It's been like I see. Well, it's been that long for about twenty eight years. In my how, how it's nuts. Like, oh, it's um, nuts. But, I've uh, been through some stuff. Yeah, we did. We yeah, uh, we, we 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 learned we had um, similar tastes. You know, like uh, horror, exploitation. You know. Um, I mean, we at that time we're both big on uh, VHS because uh, Blu-ray. Uh, sorry, DVD wasn't even known then, was it? That's right, it was uh, VHS uh, was still king at that time, and um, also in 93, the, the censorship situation in this country was a lot more stringent <laughs> than what it is now. And Wasn't it not? A lot, a lot of the films on these shelves uh, would not have been available back then. No. And it was only until the late, late 90s when uh, James Furman took a hike. Oh yeah, Forced gotta love people. James. Um yeah, that um, things took a turn for the best. And when I say that, I'm not kissing sense of foot. <laughs> I'm not saying we should all be, uh, you know, we should all be praising the BBS. See, what I am saying is we should be grateful for small mercies. Well, yeah, I mean, you know? to be honest, sometimes, you know, I mean, you know, these days you think nothing of walking in buying the driller killer and the sale. But you know how then, how hard those things were to get a hold of back in the day. It was, it was just impossible, wasn't it? I think I've said this before more than once. If... Somebody told me back in '93 that uh, don't we don't waste your money buying bootleg VHS or laser discs or whatever. Don't waste your money because all this stuff will come out in pristine quality, uncut, yeah. jam packed with great extras. If somebody told me that way back when, I wouldn't have believed them because no, the, no. Situ- the, the the censors were that strict at the time in this country. The thought of getting anything like you know the Fulci movies mm. uncut by New York River. Um, Bruce Lee movies uncut, you know, a lot yeah. of these are the Italian collection, Slasher collection, a lot of Arrow stuff, you know, Ch- Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, you yeah. know, and um, your general stuff, you name it. A lot of that stuff just, it just didn't stand a chance in the early 90s. No, it didn't. You know. And it was, I tell you what, if you were caught with it in your house, it was a big, it was a, it was like a big problem, wasn't it? You were facing jail time. Yeah, I mean, looking back, it was all a lot of, a lot of, um, well, it was it was kind, of, nothing, wasn't it? You but know, you, you know, you always had to know somebody who knew somebody, didn't you? Well, that was it. You had to go through back door, sort of <laughs> what you wanted. That, that was the only way you could get. I mean, it's I know cl- classified as in your back of horror fanzine and horror fanzines and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but you have to understand that was what people were forced to do back in them days because it's oh yeah. If you weren't around in those days, you can't really. No, you can't. You, it. you, know, you, you can't really go, uh, go through it. I think uh, that's why sometimes I appreciate some of the movies quite a lot. I mean, you know, like Zombie Flesh Eaters, that was rock hard to get, and then it's just up there, and you can watch it any time you want, even in 4K. And it makes it a little bit more special by the fact that you've got that in that stellar version, yeah. knowing full well that you used to have it on that fifth-generation bootleg copy that yeah. you could only see for the longest time. I think... If I remember rightly, I think it was Stephen Thrower, you know, the French oh, right. expert. I think he once said that you, um, you can't, it's only when you see Fulci's movies um, in the full widescreen remastered on yeah. Glory, you realise how good, how skilled a filmmaker he was. Because when you see yeah. his films on cut, poor quality, full screen VHS, mm-hmm. you can't see it. That's a good point because sometimes I always liked Zombie Flesh Eaters, but I never really appreciated it till I started like Satan went on the Arrow version. And then on that 4K to think, wow, this is not just a good film, but it's a really well-made film. It is, yeah. I mean, it's, again, I never really sort of um, picked up on that until if you compare Zombie Fleshy as to, I read this online, and I, when you when you think about it, it it's true. You, I do agree with it. When you look at Zombie Fleshy as, and uh, you compare it to say, something like Zombie Holocaust or Burial Ground, Aye. it's then you realise, you know what it is? It, it's, a, oh, yeah. it's a superior made film. You know, um, so you think Burial Ground is worse than? No, no, <laughs> no but what I mean is, I mean, so you think Burial, it's a cheaper Burial, film? Burial Ground is a comedy classic. I love it. <laughs> you know, it's, you, know, it's, you, know, you know, Burial Ground, Night oh, of the City, and Zombie Creep and Flesh off are the top three dodgy. I, I tell you what, actually, I've got a quick question for you here, John, because 
I've uh, talked to Jason Brett, the channel Jason Brett, quite a few times about the ending of Nightmare City. Yeah. So what's your take on the ending of Nightmare City? How do you feel about it? Well, it is what it is. It's an Italian exploitation movie. I mean, what can you see? I mean, the end is atrocious, you know. Gee, so I must, the, gee, I must have jumped it. You know, the first time yeah. when you saw it, did you think, what on earth has it just happened there? I, it was one of those FWTF moments, really? I think. <laughs> yeah. I'm right back to square one. <laughs> You know, I know. Uh, oh, hey. But you know, you you can't you can't come down too hard on Nightmare City because it's such an entertaining film. That that's what I say. It's, it's Apart from the end, and if you just take the ending for what it is, well, put it this way, I don't think there's another ending like it. Apart from Dallas. It's. Oh, oh, you mean the, the Colby's when she gets taken up in the, the alien spaceship? No, not the oh. alien spaceship. When Bobby's in the in the shower oh, for the yes, full series. Oh yes. Yes. Uh, kind of thought you were dead. He said, "No, I was just taking the shower." As was, you do. Was he really living his man from the lap this day, was he? Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, I mean, Nightmare City for me has pretty much got it all. You know, it, it's never boring. You know, I no, mean, it's not. There, there's lots of unintentional humour there, but you, it's there is there is some general um, good things about it. Like I say, there's always something going on. The attack in the hospital is quite so special because the lights are out, all the power's out, and right. you don't know who's, who's infected and who's not. Yeah. And you've got, I quite like the score. As well, I think we still have your Kiprioni's on the squad. Could be wrong. Um, oh, I would know. You're better with names than me. Yes. In fact, you know everything about the movies now, I think. Well, I would, yeah. I would never go that far. You know how much the modest I am. Well, um, yeah, but you can, because usually, but when I say who directed that, you'll usually. Um, so I'll go, I'm going to. Uh, let's have a little bit of a five second quiz here. Oh, no. So I'm going to point, <laughs> I'm going to look at some of these titles and say, well, who do you think they directed it? Right. And, it and if you don't get them all wrong, I just cut them all out. So, mm. you know, no pain. Django Kill. Uh, that's Julio Question. Wow. Um, Cold Blooded Beast. Fernando De Leo. I mean, absurd. Joe DeMarco. Joe DeMarco. I, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta love absurd. How hard was that to get in the back of the day? It was just impossible, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, it's. it's um, oh, it's a, I mean, I haven't seen it for years, but it's a good film. But again, I'm looking forward to watching the. The Blu-ray sooner or later. Um, I tell you, what's one of the best-looking Blu-rays I've seen in that uh, in that night? Uh, Beyond the Darkness. Joe DeMato again. Yeah. Um, live like a cop, die. No, live like a cop, die like a man. Uh, Ruggiero Giordano. Right. I was thinking Umberto Lenzi, but I was wrong there. Well, you, you, well, you, it, well. I mean, the both did direct, like you know, like a, well, especially Lenzi directed a, a fair few. He did, didn't he? Um, yeah. That's They're quite good. Like <clears throat> They're quite good, actually. I've got to watch them yet. But I do like them movies. Um, who directed um, Who directed The Big Boss? Low Way. Low Way, mm. yeah. No Way, Low Way. Well, it's funny, you know, but it's, it, it's true what... Um, I mean, of all the Bruce Lee movies, my favourite one is, is uh, Fist of Fury. And um, it's a really well-made film. And, you know, Bruce Lee's performance is pretty pretty much bang on the money, um, especially in the early scenes when he's he's um, he's mourning his master and he's sitting on his legs, crossing his hands over his knees. Oh, yeah. He really gives it his all. It comes, comes across really dramatically. Um, the only thing that spoils Fist of Fury for me, pardon me, is the um, the dummies. <laughs> When he flings you know, it around, it, 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 yeah. To me, that's the only thing that mars that film. You know, it's a, it's yeah, a, it's, a it's so film. it's so comical, isn't it? But at the same time, for me, I, I know some people say it's enter the Dragon's Bruce Lee's finest moment. If that's what they think, by all means, by mm -hmm. and take that opinion. But for me, Bruce Lee has got it all. Yeah. You know, and I think it's a character as well, Chen Zen. He's he's that relentless for revenge, mm -hmm. just stop at nothing until he's got the ones who killed his teacher. You know. Film. Oh yeah, it is mine. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to, I used to watch it purely for the fights. But now I'm older. Yes, I can still enjoy the fights. I mean, it's mm. still brilliant. But I appreciate more on like a technical level as well. And it's just a, it's just, a, it's, it's just a well-made film. Well, you know? if I'm honest, um, I'm with you on that one. I remember when I used to have the uncut versions of Bruce Lee. I would literally sometimes I would fast forward some of the the story to watch the fights. Yeah. And I don't do that now, obviously, but. It was kind of just about the fights, and then you kind of click that it's a bit more than that. So I agree with that. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I mean, personally for me, I'll never accept that the Dragon is the greatest martial arts film I've ever made. 
It's not a bad film. <clears throat> yeah. It's overrated. Mm. You know, um, I can think of a lot of other martial arts films, some of which are here, I believe, um, which I would find much more enjoyable. You know? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Uh, I do like the dragon, but I, well, I prefer Way of the Dragon. That that's my favourite because I just think it's it's got a little bit of everything in that. Um, and I think the recent remaster on that. I mean that that medium rare box set over there. I don't think it gets any love, you know. Especially what they managed to do to get everything in one go, apart from uh, Game of Death Two, you know, which I would love to see in HD. Well, that's well, that's in the Criterion I set. Know. They've yeah. got that in HD on the Criterion set, but. You've got to watch which one you get because the the Hong Kong Legends DVD had the had the Hong Kong cut, which had a the greenhouse fight was I think the greenhouse oh, fight. Oh yes, I. And I think it was also some of the um, I don't know if it was some of the funeral footage or some of the, the footage of Bruce Lee when he was acting as a in the child movies and something else. Oh, uh, missing yeah. Apart from that. Mm -hmm. So really, I think the best version of that to get for the English speaking audiences, I think, would be the English version, which I think. I think is, it's got everything in it. Is that the one that's... Because uh, I've got on DVD somewhere down there. I'm trying to think where it is. Let's have a look. It no, it's downstairs, actually. Oh, right. um, okay. But I've, I've got it. It's on... The, um, what's it, what was it on? Um, Hong Kong Legends. Hong Kong Legends. and um, I like that film, you know, Game of Death 2. You know, I like that one. Yeah, Cine, Cine Asia re-released on DVD, which I've, I've still got that DVD. And you wouldn't see it. As much of my stuff is. Um, yes, yes, it is. But it's it's um. Just imagine it's... how much shrink wrap you got in your house. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's um with with Game of Death too. It's I'll agree with what what one of the others have said as well. It's the first half of the film isn't as good because basically you're dealing with the, the, the Billy Lowe character, Bruce Lee character. Aye. But because there's that much mismatched footage, you know, of, of the of the real Bruce Lee and yeah. the double, and I do, I do agree. It's just that when people say the film works better when the Billy Lowe character's killed off, and then yeah. they introduce Bobby Lowe, then there's no need to bring a double in because it's not, it's not Bruce Lee's character. Yeah, I, I agree. That's the fact that um, mad as it seems, yes, kill the Bruce Lee off. No spoilers, really, because that's like I say, it, you know, it's going to happen. And then they get rid of the fact of using them ten seconds that they found of them drawing a picture, and then they, yeah. they go into the the proper. <laughs> Nuts and bolts of the movie, which is it's a great film. It's got some great fights as well. I think I think it was I think it was Yu Ping who choreographed the fights. I could be wrong, but it's got. But I love the line at the end where uh, the villain. I won't. I won't. Um, I won't. I won't spoil it. With this, but the villain sort of goes there. Uh, I might be a number one kung fu expert, but I need cash. Drug traffic was my answer, and I went to live in luxury forever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's just it's. Um, <laughs> Even Kung Fu Masters get skins from time to time, you know. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know, it's, um, I think I first saw that Game of Death 2, oh, it must be in 86, 87, when Rank, Rank uh, released on VHS, Big Box VHS. Uh -huh. It was a Friday night, I think, but um, oh, it was it. I think I was once, back in the 90s, I watched that film um, once a night over four, four consecutive nights. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So one night I'll put it on, and the next night put it on again. I think it was I think it was four, four nights in a row that happened. Like. Mind you, back in the day, I used to I used to binge. If I got a movie that I liked, I would binge it, and I would just watch it for the full week. It was crazy. I used to do it. I used to do that with Lauren and Holly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I used to. Um, I might watch Blockheads. You know, more than once. We Out West was always Aye. was always a popular one. Uh, I think I did the same thing with Dawn of the Dead. And Dear of the Dead, I think was was another one. Um, I don't know if I could do that now. I no, be, I, I, be stressing a bit now I, I don't. I watch a if I like a film and if I watch it twice a year, I think that's me really liking it. And that, sometimes if I watch a film it's that good and I might get there to watch it, and then we both watch it. So I might watch it twice in one week, which is rare. Mm -hmm. But it's it's got to be a film that I really enjoy to do that. And uh, some of them there are all that good that you can do that. It's got to be. We know Deborah that. She's not a f well, she's a fan of a martial arts, really, really, and at I'm the moment. To hear that. Yeah, yeah. It's more encouraging to hear that, yeah. And she's generous now as I'm twisting her arm at the back. She's like, oh, can I watch a Kung Fu tonight? I says, aye, of course you can. And it's got to be... The thing is, though, I was saying this on the video, that she'll watch any amount of go in a Kung Fu movie, and she's watched, like, the Raid and Raid 2, which has got some brutal scenes in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't done a story of Ricky, I mean. I don't. I think I may be a bit... A bit of that song. But if I say it more, do you want to watch a horror film? She's like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> so, she's not have it like. 
Yeah, should, yeah. should I like to say you were dead, mind? Did you, did you fancy a bit of Fulci, Deborah? Oh, no. How about Donny then? Oh, I'll give him a look. Yeah, yeah. Donny Fulci? Yeah, Donny Fulci. Hi, or Lucio Yen. You know? It mug it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 she loves it, man. Oh, there's, there's a knit man out that was meant to be a sort of um, spin-off. has got Batista in it. Oh, yes. Uh, I've got that on Blu-ray. Master, uh, Master Did, Ziv. Master Ziv. Yeah. Man Legacy. Yeah, he's, he's in that. And uh, Michelle Yeoh is in it as well. And so is Tony Jaw. Yeah, because it's meant to be a kind of... It's uh, the, the people that are in it, but it's kind of a little bit of a, like, say, an offshoot of it. I think... Not a remake or anything. No, I, think, right? I think the guy who plays... Max Zan, who plays the, who plays the, um, the lead character, Master Z. I think I haven't seen the film, but I think he fights Ip Man in is it Ip Man three? I could be mistaken. I've never seen Ip Man three yet, but I think I think he he fought Ip Man and won the films, and I, I can only assume he lost. And then 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 he gets his own spin off film, which is more so there. Yeah, that that time. That's um, what I heard. I didn't even know it existed because I was looking for some more stuff like yeah. um, of that ilk. Mm -hmm. But it's it's um, the fact is that that's there. I'll be getting it because it's one of them ones where sell. It's getting Amazon, but it's not at least over here, is it? Yeah, because he's like I think Tony Jaw has a has a fight with him as well. So it seems to have some mm. fight on YouTube. It's, uh, it looks looks okay. I think Donnie Yen produced it. Or he had something to do with it. He's not in it, I don't think. I think the thing is with like a lot of uh, again, I don't come back to much modern Hong Kong stuff now. I mean again my, my mindset is strictly in the seventies and eighties. Mm. Well, it, maybe it's maybe it's, uh, a touch of the nineties as well. But um I think back in the days I had a certain consistency I had like well a multitude of martial arts, you know, Bruce Lee, Angela Mao, Jimmy Wang Yu, Jackie Chan, Sam Ho Hung Yu and Biao. Um, so there's Bruce Lee. You like Bruce Lee? No, I like Bruce Lai. That's it. That's I, I, knew it was, I knew it was Bruce Lee because Bruce Lee is, um, he's, the, he's in that. The game of death. Yes. End of the game of death. Yeah. I, I love that film. Um, it's so I like bad. Bruce Lai. I like Bruce Lai and um, I watched Dragon Lee in the movie <laughs> Bruce Lee when he's kicking the, he's kicking the flower pots. I think he kicks a rock. That's right. And his plimsolls. Yeah. He still kicks it. Latin, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, oh, can I get enough of him? Went, Actually, he does look like Bruce Lee, you know. He does. Yeah, yeah he does. in a strange yeah. way. There's, with a horrible haircut. There's a scene in that film which I'm, you've seen before where I think it's later on in the film where the camera is he's, 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 he's tensing like this, dragging a knee. Mm. And the camera pans up. Camera pans up his arm, his arm to his face. Uh -huh. And he looks very much like Bruce Lee. Now, yeah, so he does. Oh, he's got, you know, I've seen him in a couple of things. He looks. He's got that in the right light, in the right way, but then he pulls them faces and he just looks preposterous. I mean, that's it. Again, I mean, the, the real Bruce Lee, I, I, think, I think the film's supposed to be called Ultimately, the film which is in the documentary. No, yeah. I think it is. Um, again, that's one that was so, so bad, but good. I mean, there's that many WTF moments in that film, aye, I think. Aye. Yeah. I'll tell you, um, the one that I really talk about, well, I try to talk about, but no one really heard of him, Billy Chong. His, his stuff is, is that available anywhere in any a, shape or form? Because I think 88 could do a good version of some Billy Chong yeah. movies. I've got a, I've got a, a DVD of, um, well, it was released over here, Super Dragon, but it's, uh, it's proper title of Super Power. Um, I think we've seen that one before. That's a good one, that. And, um, Crystal Fist was out Crystal here. Fist, yeah. yeah, Crystal Fist was 79, I think. Super Power was 80, I think. And he'd done um, Sun Dragon. I haven't seen that one for a long time. And uh, Fistful of Talons, which which was good. Uh, yeah, I like that one. And um, Kung Fu Executioner. Uh, right. Kung, uh, Kung Fu Zombie, Kung Fu from Beyond the Grave. And the old, I think the last year, Marshall was in the Fifth Mad Mission movie where he had a, he had a, a, a small role as a bad guy where he gets he gets uh, knocked about a bit at the end. Mm. Apparently, from what I remember reading years ago, his partner, Mark Mission 5, was supposed to be much bigger, but he had a phone out with the director, uh, the legendary level call in. And uh, because of the phone, I his, his part was reduced, reduced in the film. Yeah. He wasn't given much coverage. You do see him, he is there for a mm -hmm. bit at the end, but not, not much. But I think um, I think he was, he was probably the best of the Jackie Chan sort of. I was going to say, because you had your Bruce Lee lookalikes, he was like a Jackie Chan lookalike, really, he was, wasn't he? He was like yeah. the new Jackie Chan, but I mean, Jackie Chan continued on doing his stuff up, well, till now. I think, I think he's, I think Billy Chong's real name was, because he was in the Indonesian, I think his real name was Willie Dozan. Really? Willie Dozan. And I think when he, 
when the I think when the um the film up was dried up, I think he used to run his own chain of snooker parlors or something like that over in Indonesia, I'm assuming. Um Chong's um snooker house. That's it, yeah. Hot black with Chong or something like that. That's it. Uh, you know if you said to him, say I'm not gonna pay for my table, you probably got a queue over the back of your head. <laughs> no, but uh, no, but uh, he was. He was uh, <clears throat> I enjoyed watching him. Me, yeah. I mean, ah, oh, that uh, was uh, very entertaining. In that sort of early, like sort of, uh, well, drunken master sort of. You know, if you've seen drunken master, you've seen all the sort of um, Billy Chong movies in a way. Well, yeah, it, it's. Um, I mean, let's have a look. I mean, some. I think it's generally acknowledged that drunken master was the first kung fu comedy, but I think there's some out there who will say that that was really. And started in 1975 with the, the spiritual box of the show first film, which is out on Blu-ray by 88. I don't know if you've got it here. I see it's a spiritual boxer. No, I don't think I have. Um, I've I've seen it though. I've, um, I've, yeah. To buy, I think. I've seen the film myself. I saw I saw it a while back. I think it was Lau Lau Kar Leung's um, directorial debut. It was okay. It was okay. I mean, I've I've, I've seen better. Um, so, I think I would stick with Drunken Master personally, but that's personally uh, my uh, my choice. Um, so, I'll I tell you what I'm going to do there, John, because mm -hmm. we've got about 40 minutes on the clock. I think this will make a pretty good video in itself. Okay. Um, what I'll do is, um, this will be sort of like the end of this video. We're going to film some more stuff. And this is going to be, I don't know, I think we're going to film like three sort of individual videos at this point. And I don't know which one you're going to see first. I don't think this is going to be the first one. Um, but obviously on the videos that I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce them. And then they'll be, um, you're going to see, I'm going to fill you in, in the details of it. So you might be seeing this sort of after the effect, a bit of a time machine thing. I'm going to do a bit of a Doctor Who uh, version. Yeah. <laughs> or you're going to see this in the future and, and that before and whatever. So uh, we're going to sign off now. So and uh, can I just see if anybody can I just see if anybody who I haven't bought the death thank you for staying awake through all of this video, okay? <laughs> right. So we'll leave it there, but we're going to film some more stuff, and uh, I might run out of battery here, like which is which is unreal for a phone. Never done that before. Okay, so we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Take care now. All the best. Cheers. Bye now.